Cabela's Spring Thunder is brought to you by GEICO. Saving people money on more than just car insurance. The National Wild Turkey Federation. Conserve. Hunt. Share. ScoutLookWeather.com. Never trust a weatherman who doesn't hunt. And Cabela's. It's in your nature. Welcome to Cabell Spring Thunder. We're actually uh, headed down to Tennessee right now, but I decided to stop in Missouri on the way and listen this morning. And the, the birds are tearing it up down here. They're starting to break out of their flocks. So we, youth season comes in here in Missouri next weekend, and I'm expecting it to be some pretty awesome hunting. I'd say aggressive calling and any kind of Jake and hen or Tom and hen decoy combinations are gonna work really well for that youth season. But we've got an awesome show for you this week. The first hunt, we're going down to Georgia, joining Del Kirby on a public land hunt for a Big Eastern. And uh, we're also going to join Greg Clements out in Nebraska and even head down into the Southwest for a hunt in California. So we've pretty much got all our bases covered from the U.S. on this week's episode. A lot of turkey hunting action, so we hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's, uh, what is today? Today is Thursday, April the 2nd. Yesterday, April the 1st, I came over to a piece of public ground not too far from my house. It's a wildlife management area that I've been hunting for years. And I usually don't hunt it, I don't like to hunt it the first couple of weeks of the season just because of the number of people, but we're coming up on our third weekend, so the end of our second week. I decided to come over here yesterday afternoon and went to a spot that I'm pretty familiar with. It's a, it's a big, pretty knoll. Problem is, it's about a mile and a half walk. Last night I didn't see any, but I did hear a bird go to roost. He gobbled twice and uh, heard him fly up. So I know what ridge he's on. I'm about three quarters of the way there now. It's probably at least another hour before sun comes up. And when you hunt public ground, you just, you gotta beat everybody to the punch. So from about this point on, it'll be lights out. I'm just waiting for it to get just light enough to where I can walk without the flashlight. Hopefully I'll, he'll, he'll give me a courtesy gobble and I can pinpoint exactly pretty close to what tree he's in and I can get set up about 75 yards from him and like I said it's wide open the minute he hits the ground he should be able to see my decoy should be a good morning nonetheless Got him. That's what I'm talking about. Roosted does mean roasted. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Mr. Avian X. That was awesome. What a beautiful morning I had this morning. It's Today is uh, Thursday, April the 2nd, and this is my first bird of the year. I've been hunting almost every day. I don't think there's only been one or two days of the season so far I hadn't hunted, and it's been tough. I've actually left my property and I'm hunting a wildlife management area about 45 minutes from my house. And I've been hunting this place for probably about 20 years and it is probably the most beautiful place that you'd want to hunt in the state of Georgia. It's uh, all this is national forest land. I won't say the name of the, of the WMA because it gets enough pressure as it is, but it is an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous place to hunt. 
they burned it again this year. For the last three or four years, they burned it every year. And it's just made the turkey hunting incredible in here. I really didn't hunt in here last year. I killed two birds two years ago in here. I came in here yesterday, sat up there on this ridge where I shot the two birds two years ago and heard this bird gobble on the side of this ridge here. He gobbled twice. I got here early this morning. That was the key, was getting here super early. Mostly because I wanted to get my truck parked in the parking spot before somebody else did. Um, if somebody had been parked there, I would have just turned around and went somewhere else as, as a common courtesy. But uh, I managed to get here before anybody else got parked in there and what made the walk all the way back in here in the dark. And then I, I waited till it got light enough to where I could walk without making any noise. Being it's been burnt made it very easy because there's no leaves to deal with. There's actually a ditch that runs down through here. And this is one spot in this ditch that, that I figured he would cross. I was afraid that he may not want to cross this ditch right here. So I picked the, the highest point of, the, of this ditch that he wouldn't, he shouldn't have a problem crossing and he, he didn't, he come right through here like it was no problem. What a beautiful day and a, and a good way to start my turkey season. And thanks for watching Cabela Spring Thunder and we'll see you on the next hunt. Well, it's my first afternoon here in Nebraska, and this morning's hunt was a bust. I mean, it was the least amount of gobbling I've heard on the roost on this farm ever in 20 years of hunting. But, you know, it's kind of cold and overcast, and it's been rainy, so they're not real fired up. Um, but I guess I should say, you know, my dad and I saw, I think, 10 longbeards. There was a group of six that kind of moved through quickly, and I know they could see the decoys and had no interest. And then we saw another group of four up on the hill in the cedars, and I'm pretty sure they're with the, uh, the group of hens because they were gobbling a little bit but called to them and they had no interest either so you know that kind of behavior is typical this time of year with this early season hunting when they're flocked up like this calling and decoying doesn't seem to work very well at least not on this farm but i do have a good strategy for tonight and uh, i picked up a key piece of information uh, last night when i was scouting i was sitting across the valley uh, watching over this field and i saw that group of uh, about 40 hens and four toms i watched where they went back to roost what I noticed is they went around this point of trees and there's actually a really narrow gap between the, the point of the trees and there's a berm out in the field. So it's a perfect pinch point. And uh, I came in this afternoon, got the blinds set up. Then also about 60 yards away, there's a water hole that we've been getting a lot of pictures of the turkeys using pretty consistently almost every day. So there's a lot that comes together right here. You know, I got the pinch point, got the water hole, got the roost nearby. I think it's about as good a plan as any. You know, it's not quite as exciting as calling and decoying them, you know, when they're fired up, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do to try to fill your tag. And right now, you know, I'm just relying on the birds doing the same thing that they did last night. Good thing is, I can look out across the valley and I can see uh, about 20 hens over there, uh, just kind of loafing. And my guess is that those toms are over there somewhere too. So now I just gotta wait and uh, we'll see if it works. Well, it's about 6.30 right now and things are starting to happen. That group of hens just flew down from the east and lit pretty much straight north of me here, uh, about 150 yards out in the field. So my guess is they were flying down to meet the rest of the group. So that means they're probably gonna head this way. So we'll see if that's what they do, but it's looking good right now. Got him. 
Oh man, the plan came together. One by one. First the hens, then the jakes, and then there was two toms back there. I could hear them strutting and drumming. Sure enough, they came around the corner. And as soon as I got the camera position, they kind of dropped strut and really started moving. I went to clip on my release, and I think, you can maybe still tell, it was full of dirt. So here they are, 15 yards away. I need to be clipping my release on to get a shot. Just forced it, clipped on, got the camera back on him, made the shot. And uh, I'm pretty sure he's down right here. I'm pretty sure I could hear him flopping. But that was awesome. That was exciting. Yes. Well, here he is, my opening day, Nebraska Longbeard. And uh, as I said in the blind, the hunt worked out to perfection. Yeah, I've talked about it quite a bit so far, but coming into this hunt, you know, in the past couple days, I uh, quickly realized uh, with the weather way, the way it's been, you know, kind of cold and rainy and overcast, and with the birds being really grouped up, I knew it was going to be a a tough hunt, at least from the standpoint of calling and decoying birds, you know, like we've had some really good hunts in the past. So the scouting the other night paid off big time. And uh, you know, that's a key to these early season birds when they're grouped up like this, knowing their travel patterns and then being able to pick them off in an area you know, like I was able to, to find here where they, uh, you know, they funnel down before they go to roost. But boy, I'm thankful that it all worked out and I uh, feel very blessed to be able to come back to Nebraska and uh, have another successful hunt on the uh, farm that I grew up hunting here. So. What a great way to start the season. I'm excited. On last week's show, I showed you the first set of camouflage that I like to wear for spring turkey hunting. Today, I'm going to show you the second set. This is the Cabela's Insect Defense System. I really like wearing this stuff when those temperatures start to warm up later on in the spring and we start to deal with a lot of the insects like the mosquitoes, the chiggers, and especially the ticks. This clothing actually has a chemical called permethrin built into the garment itself and it repels ticks. I've tried it out for the last year. I wear it not only turkey hunting in warm weather, but to put up tree stands in the summer and for early season deer hunting, and you absolutely can't beat it. Since I've been wearing this stuff, I have not, knock on wood, found a single tick on me. So I've got 100% confidence in it. It's gonna keep the ticks off of you, keep those chiggers and mosquitoes off as well. It's a great garment for warm weather hunts because it's really lightweight. You need to check it out. It's the Cabela's Insect Defense System. It's Friday afternoon. We have about three or four hours here to scout the ranch. Uh, coming up from the bottom, one of the things that we notice is the south slopes have really uh, turned and they've already turned a yellow color. And on the north facing slopes and up here a little higher, there's a lot more green grass and um, it's a lot drier year than we can remember coming here probably the last five or six years. I don't know what the birds are gonna be doing. Um, I don't know if this heat, we have record 90 degree heat, which is probably about 20 degrees warmer than normal. I don't know what it's gonna do to the birds yet, but uh, we're gonna try and find our birds down by these waters. We got some creeks and some live water and some tanks on this ranch. We're gonna try and roost birds. Tomorrow's the opener. Uh, Jay and Will have tags and uh, we're gonna try and get it done. So stay tuned and uh, Welcome to another year of Cabela Spring Thunder here in California. We're up here in the mountains. We got six gobblers down there running around, chasing each other around, putting on a show for us. So we're going to keep watching them for a little bit and see where they decide they want to roost. And there's a gobble. They're gobbling right now. So they're just going wild down there. So this is awesome. So stay tuned for more.
don't know if I was gonna have a clean shot or not. I don't want to kill the deer. That was awesome. I finally said okay, okay, and <laughs> I think this one was working the decoy over. Yeah. You guys did an awesome job. Uh, it's some. awesome to get a double right off the Absolutely. right off the bat. Absolutely. Fantastic. Open in the morning. There was really three really nice gobblers came into that, and uh, one one younger one, but they just came in and fumbled the Jake back here right off, and just took him down. It was awesome. <laughs> We really appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, we man. appreciate yeah. you. No problem. Appreciate you. No problem. Great job, guys. You worked well, great. I'd say those DSDs were worth their money right there, weren't they? Oh, yeah. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode. And uh, you're just going to have to come back next week to see how me and Mr. Roy put these two birds down here in Tennessee on opening day. So we appreciate you joining us. And remember, if you're not already a member or you need to renew your membership with the National Wild Turkey Federation, please click on the link in the corner of our screen, go over to their page and become one. But that's going to wrap it up. We'll see you next Monday right back here for another episode of Cabela Spring Thunder.